Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we are going to be going over some Ableton Live instruments. We're going to be looking at the synths, and there's three of them, Wavetable, Analog, and Operator. They both go about things kind of similar, kind of different. I'm going to give you a brief overview of those three. So let's start off with everyone's favorite Wavetable. I'll just drag that, click and drag into that area there. This is Wavetable. And uh, for those following at home, we can go over to uh, this keyboard option here. This will make our home row, A, S, D, F, G, H, F, K, L, whatever, um, turns that into the keyboard. So we can play with our uh, uh, computer keyboard as opposed to a MIDI keyboard. And how you go up and down the octaves is hitting Z or X. Right? And we're playing uh, kind of a pure sine wave right now. With that being said, I shall engage a teaching device. Uh, you can do this if you'd like, um, but what I'm doing is I'm putting an EQ8 so I can look at the spectrum of what's going on. And then I'm going to insert a Max for Live device called the JO Oscilloscope. Expand. And uh, let's see, I'll go trigger up. All right, we're good. So um, just so you can visually see what's going on up here, oscilloscope, down here, spectrum. And there you go. So let's hop to some synthesis basics. So what a synth does is it generates a waveform that is cycled over and over again in a loop, and that at a particular speed produces a pitch and that will be what makes the sound right so right now we have a sine wave i'll just bring that down right it's a pure pure and clean tone we can see right there it's just one fundamental sine waves are pretty useful there are other kinds of waves right and you take those waves and then you affect them with a filter. And that's called subtractive synthesis. Wavetable is actually a wavetable synth because the wavetables aren't analog modeled. Well, they can be, but the wavetables are digital and not you're not able to produce them with analog equipment. Analog equipment's like, you know, basic shapes like like uh, you just click and drag. We got sine, triangle, which has a bit more harmonics, saw, and uh, square, or pulse, right? Basic shapes you can do with electronics. Wavetables, which I'll give you a, a little, um, you know, overview, is, are like complex. Like the oscilloscope's freaking out because it doesn't know what to do. That's uh, one of those uh, one of those examples of sounds. We're just going to start with a basic shape for now. We're going to do basic subtractive synthesis. Subtractive meaning that we filter things. So how Wavetable works is it has two oscillators. Now an oscillator is a sound generator. We have two here, and we can engage them by hitting the yellow button here. So we can mix mix and match. Uh, our oscillators and everything in here gets put into the filter depending on the routing so we have a saw wave and you'll notice on here uh, you can see lots of harmonics compared to the sine wave right saws are very colorful i guess that's why they're very useful for like uh, bases and things like that. That is then run into the filter. Now what a filter does is it attenuates um, a certain frequency, like a, it, it attenuates frequencies above the cutoff point. So when you have something called a low pass filter, which is this, I'm just doing brief uh, a brief overview of all these things, a low pass filter, which will past the lows, you'll notice up in the EQ8 that we will kind of attenuate the higher frequencies. We'll roll it off. And also on the oscilloscope, you'll notice that we're shaping the sound. We're essentially subtractively synthesizing the sound. So 
give that a try and uh, be amazed. There's different kinds of filters, but we're going to get into that way later. Um, just understand that basic shape or shape in general goes into filter and then is shaped. Right, and you can do some things like bump up the cutoff point to add a bit of uh, resonance. Right, you notice what that does to the, the overall shape of the sound. Right, this is what those Moogs do that everyone uh, gets excited about. You can have multiple filters doing multiple things. You can have filters that talk to you. Well, like the, like the talking bass filter, format filters, vowel filters. All sorts, of, all sorts of things. Our mouths are filters. They take the vibrations and it kind of attenuates and does some stuff and does like resonant D type of things. And uh, there you have it. Like, you know, our mouths are filters. Just think of it that way. <laughs> I don't know if that helps. Right. And no two synths are exactly alike, unless they're modeling something from back in the day. Then they're, you know, all kind of referencing the same thing. Anyway. From there, we have the amplifier. Now, the amplifier is something that goes back to like old school, and that is hardwired to the output, right? So imagine this as like what the audio is doing over time. When I hit the key, it goes from silence to fully engaged, or fully engaged, and then when I release, it'll kind of tail out like this. You notice how it's kind of tailing out at the end? I can fix that, or not fix that, I can change that by just moving that over. Instantaneous stop, right? Make that longer. It's like five seconds, a little too long. I can do that with the attack. Now this, is an, this is an envelope. There's different kinds of envelopes. This one is the typical one you'll run across, ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, release. The attack will make it ramp up, right? Basic effect, basic affecting of the amplifier, right? And the uh, the sustain will dictate, I guess you call it the punchiness. Like I go from zero to fully loud, I guess, and then back down, right? So you have that little bit of attack. more of like a punchy sound and that is with the amplifier so it's like it's basic shape or wave form oscillator wavetable whatever into filter and then that is output to the amplifier and then that's what uh, Ableton gets uh, wavetable is far more advanced than that but that is the basic basic thing right there so you can move up and down the keyboard And you can adjust the filter here. And you can also, we'll get into this, I promise, you can attach an envelope to the frequency or an envelope or an LFO, which is another oscillator, to uh, the wavetable position. You can go crazy, but I don't want to overwhelm. And that is, uh, is wavetable, so we can cross that off. A different one is analog. Now, analog is um, an analog modeled uh, uh, instrument and this one is when this came out it was pretty cool right it, it, it's it's been out for I don't know how long I think it came on like 2007 it was like the Ableton's answer to like we want like something that is usable for like the electro crowd but that's like not modeling a specific retro instrument but like does model them all kind of thing. So you have uh, interesting routing here. So similar things apply. A lot of synths you program left to right. So left to right you program them. So just keep that in mind. So this is analog here. And it sounds like so. We can basically get a rundown of what's going on. Oscillator, right? This is the oscillator section. It is right here so this is oscillator one we're going to get into this more advanced and then oscillator two just like in wavetable but it's a it's a different kind of layout what makes it 
kind of different is that these shapes are set. So you got saw. So I'll just disengage oscillator two so we can just hear oscillator one. We got saw, analog saw, sine. You'll notice that there's more harmonics in this sine wave. This means that it's analog modeled. Like it's it's very difficult to get a pure. I think it's I think it's impossible to have a a mathematically pure sine wave come out of an analog piece of equipment. Right? So there's harmonics there, which we can't see in the oscilloscope, but we can see in the spectrum, which is pretty cool. Um, what else? Yeah, so we have uh, our pulse, our square. Right, so this is a, this is a unique um, analog waveform, or not waveform, oscillator, because you can adjust the width of it. And I'll just give you an example. So Ableton has context sensitive menu. So oscillator one right here, down here, we'll just change the width. I'm, I'm just giving you, I'm planting seeds of like, oh yeah, pulse width, holy crap. So the width, the duty cycle is 50-50. So it's kind of even, we can change that. Right, so we can do some really interesting things, and that is Blade Runner. You know what I mean? Kind of, it's like one of those one of those uh, analog things. And this is this is analog. Same thing applies. Filter. Still a low pass filter. I'm gonna get into different filters later, but just hold on to your hats. And then the amplifier envelope, which is uh, down here, right? Context sensitive. I clicked on it. Amplifier is. Um, engaged and you can see visually what's going on here right you'll notice that this curve is more curved which again is an analog style we can change that to linear but i'm getting more into advanced stuff so the curve is there and i can make it snappy just do stuff with that. So what we're doing, or what I'm trying to do, is I'm trying to break it down into just basic, basic elementary particles. We're just focusing on this part, right? A lot of synths are just this part. Oscillator, right? Here, I'll just oscillator in this section right here, which is set to a square wave filter section to shape and then the amplifier section to you know change the the loudness of it without the amplifier section in old synths the the oscillator just goes on forever and ever it's always generating the sound if you've ever used a uh, like modular gear it's always generating the sound the amplifier will open up the volume and then it'll control it based on what you have here in your envelope so when you press a key it'll open up the volume, let things go through. It'll be affected via the envelope or whatever. And then when you let go, it will close depending on the release. And uh, yeah, that is a analog, uh, basic rundown of analog. Keep that, keep that in your brain and uh, things like that. Basic overview of another synth. So this is you're like, oh, oh, okay, what's this? All right, so there's a bunch of things here, but you don't, what's going on? Don't worry about it. Just understand that you're gonna, you're gonna get it, I promise. So this is an operator, which is an FM synthesizer. And basically, instead of an oscillator going into a filter, an oscillator is going into another oscillator, which is affecting its pitch. Uh, and this will become more and more clear as we start to understand LFOs. I'll actually show you. Right, so operator um, operates. Um, we'll just we'll just stick with sine waves for now. Sine waves, pure and clean tones. And if you modulate the pitch of a sine wave with another sine wave, you get these really interesting harmonics. And I, I gotta, I want to be careful with my words here because I don't want to overwhelm or confuse. But basically, what we're doing is uh, we are modulating, changing the pitch over time with an LFO. So I'll just turn this on. Right. 
So what that is, is that's pitch modulation of the sine wave that we have. So don't, don't worry too much about what's going on here, but just worry about when the rate gets really, really, really fast. Like right now it's slow. When it gets really, really fast, you start to hear, you can't differentiate the movement of the pitch. You start to hear FM synthesis, which is pretty dope. Right, we got to go a lot faster than that. And you can do that with these, uh, uh, these uh, oscillators, which are actually called operators. Um, and they're, they were made famous in the 80s. So what I'm going to do is uh, just let you listen to this. And I'm going to increase the level of uh, uh, the os uh, operator B. And don't worry about routing. Um, just remember that uh, D goes into C, goes into B, goes into A uh, by default. Uh, we can change the routing by going over here, but that's getting a little too advanced. I'm going to increase the level here. Oh, and I should mention that when you use um, operators, then it uh, it's always um, in continuity of the pitch that you're playing. If it's not, if it's fixed, you get like a dissonant sound. But when it's not fixed and it's synced to it, it's always kind of in tune. I'll give you I'll give you an idea of what it sounds like. Um, when we increase the frequency, right? So it's it's wobbling right now. It's a very slow frequency, uh, ten hertz, ten times a second. Well, slow relative to FM synthesis. As we increase it, right? You can't hear the wobble anymore. It's in the audio audible range. Did I say that correctly? It's it's in the range where. Um, you can't differentiate, so you're like, oh, okay, that's like a brand new sound now. It, this, the pitch is so fast. Yeah, that's pretty fast. And it's fixed, so it doesn't make sense contextually. And we can go really fast with the multiplier. So it's uh, 311 hertz times 10. Right, we get like way up into the aliasing range or whatever. Well, I don't know the term for it, but we get right up there, which is kind of uncomfortable. But anyway, with the uh, with the with the when it's not fixed, we get uh, things that make sense musically. So what you can do is for each of these operators, you can have its own envelope affecting its uh, volume right because we're not actually hearing b we're only hearing a right we're only hearing this one b isn't doing anything besides affecting a we're not actually hearing a we're hearing the effect of b on a so for uh b what we can do is i can just do this right we have we have fm synthesis now um, and it's super fun and cool. And that is, I guess, the, the basis, ba basics, the basis or the basics of the, uh, the, the three main synths that you'll be working in, in, uh, Ableton Live. Next up, we're going to look at the, the modeled stuff, uh, very briefly, um, for those that want to check that out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care and have a good one.